people were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. People were very excited. Not only they were shouting and praising him, they were also using all these palm branches to celebrate that their king was entering Jerusalem. Boys and girls, do you know that people were very happy that they had found their king? But not everyone was very happy. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, they were not happy at all. They wanted to get rid of Jesus. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, they were not happy with Jesus. They were looking for ways to get rid of Jesus. And they found a man named Judas Iscariot. Judas was one of the 12 disciples that was with Jesus. Judas was willing to betray Jesus for silver coins. Isn't that sad? Judas was willing to betray Jesus for these coins. During the Passover meal, Jesus told the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. And not only that, Peter denied Jesus three times. Isn't it sad? Not only he is betrayed by one of his disciples, but Peter denies him three times. went to the Mount of Olives. He went to a place called Gethsemane. He wanted to go there because he wanted to pray. He wanted to talk to God. He wanted to talk to his father. Luke chapter 22 verse 42 says, this is what Jesus told his father, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Boys and girls, Jesus knew that the cup that he had to drink was not going to be sweet, it was going to be bitter. He knew there was going to be a lot of suffering when he made the choice to follow God's will. Boys and girls, Jesus told his disciples, when before he went to pray, he told his, uh, his disciples, be alert and stay and pray with me. What do you think it happened? Were the disciples alert and pray with Jesus? Sadly to say no. When Jesus went back, he found them sleeping. It was almost as if they had a bed and a pillow and they were snoring probably. Boys and girls, what Jesus was going to do was not going to be fun. It was not going to be pleasant. But Jesus did it because he loves us very much. People were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was arrested and he was taken in front before Pilate. Luke chapter 23, verse 20 says, Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no ground for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified. And their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. Boys and girls, Jesus was not guilty, but he was crucified. We know from the Bible, from how the Bible describes his story, is that he suffered a lot. Not only they beat him, but he had to carry his own cross. And when he got to that place, they put nails in his hands and his feet. Boys and girls, before he died, he says, it is finished, and then he died. Boys and girls, I want you to remember that you and I can choose to follow Jesus, our Savior. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you done that decision before? 
Have you admitted that you have done the wrong thing, that you have sinned, and that you need God? Have you taken the step to believe that Jesus died for you on the cross? Ah, boys and girls, Jesus' death was not the final story. Jesus came back to life three days later. So do you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross and came back to life three days later? Do you believe that Jesus suffered and he fulfilled God's mission? Did you confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior? Boys and girls, we are going to take a look at today's Bible verse, which is in John chapter 3, verse 16. So we're going to do, if you are able to, do the actions with me. Okay, we're in John chapter 3, verse 16. And this is how it goes. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3. Verse 16. Boys and girls, I want you to remember that you and I could choose to follow Jesus, who is our Savior. Jesus came to the world to die for our sins and came back to life three days later. Let me answer these two questions. Do you believe Jesus died for your sins and came back to life three days later? Do you trust God who guide you to make the right choices? If you have not made this choice before and you're willing to do it today, let's do it together. I'm going to read this prayer and I want you to follow the prayer and I want you, I'm going to invite you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. So let's do it together. One, two, three. Dear God, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe he died on the cross to pay the price for my sins and rose again. I want Jesus to come into my life and be my savior. I want to follow him and obey him. I want him to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for the gift you have given to me and for preparing a home for me in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, as we end today's Bible lesson, let's pray together. Let's put our hands together, let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us, to take care of our sins, to get rid of our sins. Lord, I'm so thankful for all you have done. Continue to teach us how to do the right thing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. When they started to get close to the city, Jesus sent two disciples ahead with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you and you'll find a donkey tied there. Bring her to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, simply say the master needs it. Now the disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey back to Jesus and the disciples laid some of their clothes on the donkey's back. And Jesus got on it and he started to ride to the city. Nearly all of the people in the crowd began to throw their garments and their cloaks down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut palm branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed. All of them were calling out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in God's name. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David, Hosanna. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this guy? The parade crowd answered, This is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus was on his way back to Jerusalem now to celebrate the first day of the festival of unleavened bread. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? Jesus gave them these instructions. As you go into the city, you will see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says my time has come and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. Well, that was all it took. 
and Jesus sat down that evening with his disciples. While they were eating, Jesus said something that really stirred them up. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples were shaken. How could anyone do this after having spent so much time with Jesus? Surely not one of his friends. Each one asked in turn, am I the one Lord? Jesus answered, the one who hands me over is someone I eat with daily, one who passes me food at this very table. Right after Jesus said this, Judas, the one who would betray him, spoke up asking a question, am I the one? And Jesus told him, don't play games with me, Judas. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat for this is my body. Then he took a cup of wine, thanked God for it and gave it to them. And he said, each one of you drink some of it. This wine is my blood, which will be poured out to forgive the sins of many and begin the new agreement from God to his people. But mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went on a walk to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus went with his followers to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here, I'm gonna go over there and pray. He asked Peter and his two sons of Zebedee to come with him. And then he began to be very sad and troubled. Jesus said to his friends, my heart is so heavy with grief, I feel as if I'm dying. Wait here and just stay awake with me. Then Jesus went on just a little further away from them and he began to pray. My father, if it's possible, don't make me drink from this cup, but do what you want, not what I want. Then he went back to his followers and he found them sleeping. He said to Peter, couldn't you stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray for strength against the temptation to sleep. Jesus went away a second time and he prayed, my father, if I must do this and it's not possible for me to escape it, then I pray that you want will be done. Then he went back to the followers and again, he found them sleeping. So he just left them and he went away one more time and he prayed. This third time he prayed, he said the same thing again. Then Jesus went back to the followers and said, are you still sleeping? Get up, the time has come for the son of man to be handed over. Stand up, we must go. Here comes the one who will hand me over. And while Jesus was still speaking, Judas walked right up to him and he had a crowd of people with him. They'd all assembled because the chief priests and the leaders said to take these guys with you. Judas had a signal. The one I kiss will be Jesus, just arrest him. So Judas walked right up to Jesus and said, Hello, teacher, and Judas kissed him. Jesus answered, friend, do the thing you came to do. Then the men came and they grabbed Jesus and they arrested him. When that happened, Peter grabbed his sword and he pulled it out and he swung it at the servant of the high priest and he cut off his ear. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword away. People who use the sword are gonna die by the sword. There is no place here for that. So Jesus picked up the ear and he miraculously attached it back onto the man. Then all of Jesus' followers left him, and they ran away. I'm Hannah. And I'm Ethan. And it's time for a Bible story. A long time ago, in the land of Israel, there was a man named Jesus. But Jesus wasn't just like any regular man. Jesus was the Son of God. And everywhere Jesus went, he taught people about God and performed amazing miracles. He healed the sick, calmed storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus was on a mission to show people how much God loved them. And in this part of the story, he did that in the most incredible way. Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem, and they had just celebrated a special Jewish holiday called Passover. And that's when Jesus shared the bread and the wine with them, just like communion. Exactly. At the time, the disciples didn't quite know what it all meant when Jesus did that, but they would find out pretty soon. Not long after that, one of the disciples, named Judas, left to have a secret meeting with the religious leaders called Pharisees. Wait, weren't the Pharisees like the bad guys? They didn't like Jesus at all. That's right. The Pharisees didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God, and they wanted to stop him no matter what. So why would Judas leave to go meet with them? Well, he betrayed Jesus in exchange for some money. What? No! You know, that guy was a real Judas. <gasps> Oh, so that's where that comes from. Got it. Later that night, Jesus and the rest of the disciples were in a garden, and everyone had fallen asleep except for Jesus. He was praying to God because he knew that what was about to happen would be very difficult. Suddenly, a group of Roman soldiers showed up, and they had come to arrest Jesus and take him back to the Pharisees. 
Psh, no worries. Jesus is like the most powerful person ever. I mean, he's like the son of God. He could just stop the soldiers from taking him and walk away. Piece of cake. Let's go keep healing people. Well, that is true. He had all the power to get away. In fact, the soldiers asked him, are you really the son of God? And when Jesus replied, I am, it knocked the soldiers and everyone around him down to the ground. So that's when he walked away like, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya, right? Nope. Jesus let the soldiers take him away. Nobody was going to take his life. He was going to give it as a sacrifice so that sin and death would be defeated once and for all. Whoa. All right, so what happened next? The soldiers took him back to a Roman governor called Pontius Pilate, who was kind of like a judge. Wait, remind me, why is Jesus on trial? He didn't even do anything. All he did was good stuff. You're right. But there were a lot of people that didn't like him and wanted to stop what he was doing. The Pharisees lied about him and a big crowd gathered, calling for him to be punished very harshly. Ah, like a really long time out or like you're grounded kind of thing, right? No, nothing like that. The crowd demanded that he had to be put to death, crucified on a cross. That was the most extreme and painful way for a person to die. And no matter what Pontius Pilate said, the crowd wouldn't let up. Eventually, he gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. He was beaten, spit on, and humiliated. A crown of thorns was pushed into his head, mocking him for saying he would start a new kingdom. And he was forced to carry a heavy wooden cross to the place where he would be nailed to it to suffer and slowly die. Man, and he just let all that stuff happen to him? He did. But that's how much he wanted people to know that God loved them, and he wants them to be a part of his family. After Jesus hung on the cross for some time, the sky grew dark, and he said, it is finished. Then Jesus' body went limp, and he died. So, wait, now's where you're going to say, that's not where it ends, right? You know, it, it can't just be over like that, right? Of course it's not over. This isn't a sad ending. It's just the opposite. Jesus laid down his life so he could defeat death and our sin could be forgiven. The best part of the story is right around the corner. But we have to wait until next time, right? Yep. (sighs) You know, you got me good that time. All right, hurry up so we can get to the next part. The end. Obey the sun
John 336.